This is Carol Emsley. I'm, it is uh, February the 11th at 1.40 in the afternoon, and I'm here at Carol Lutheran Village to talk to Rose Pugh. Rose, can you tell me when and where you were born? <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> I was born in March, on March the 5th, 1922, in Mount Carmel, Pennsylvania. And tell me about your family. My, my mother and father, this is an interesting story about the night I was born, if you want to hear it. Absolutely. <laughs> For the whole night, the first night I was born, my parents thought I was a boy. Oh dear. <laughs> Did I tell you this before? I don't know, it doesn't matter because it isn't in the archives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it's funny that they thought I was a boy all night until the morning when they changed my diaper and they knew I was a girl. <laughs> but my mother had a midwife to help deliver me. And the midwife was a foreign language, which was not the same as theirs. Okay. And so uh, what she said was I was a golf boy, which in her language meant a split boy, which was a girl. And they thought I, I was a boy. That's all my father wanted to hear, boy, because he already had two daughters. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they, all night long, I was a boy. Of course, they didn't name me. When did they name you? That I don't know. <laughs> you had two older sisters then? I had two older sisters. One was Mary and the other one was Anne. Mary was the older of the two. And uh, the, the next youngest was uh, eight years my junior. And my sister Mary was 12 years my, ju my, my senior, not my junior. Anyway, uh, I was the first child born to my parents in the United States. They came from Hungary uh, right after the World War I was over. Mm -hmm. My father came before that, but my mother couldn't come because of the war until the war was over. So uh, it was a long period between times they saw each other. Why did, why did he leave Hungary? Why did he leave Hungary? Well, <clears throat> that's another interesting story. <laughs> at least I think it is. At, at that period of time, it was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And uh, people, the men had to serve time in the military, in the army. I forget how many years it was, but it was maybe eight years. It was a long time. They had to serve that time. And uh, they could serve it in intervals. Like they could serve for four years and then knock off for four years and go back and serve the next four, whatever it was. But they had quite a quite a big commitment of time then. Yeah, it was. Okay. And my father didn't want to stay for that. He had already, I don't know if he already served some time or not, but he didn't want any parts of it anyway, so he left. He left the country, and that's a big story. He told that story to us more than once. and. He had to leave without anything except what he had on his back because he didn't want to be under suspicion. So they'd pick him up and arrest him. Right. So uh, he sneaked out of Hungary. He went to France and, and took the, uh, the, a ship from the Havre, I think it was France. And I don't know, the rest of the story is, is lost to me about his getting here because uh, we never heard it from him or anybody else. Somebody knows, but I don't know who that would be. And it would be interesting to find out just, you know, how he got here. Right. And then your mother was left in Hungary with two little girls, right? Yes. Where did she live? She stayed with his mother. Okay. His mother was still living, and mm -hmm. she was not well, and my mother helped take care of her. And then I don't know anything of the story after that. I wish I had asked her more questions than I did. I didn't really ask her too much. We just listened whenever she talked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or when my father talked, we just listened. And they spoke Hungarian then? Oh, yes. They didn't speak English. And you spoke Hungarian? I would, oh, well, my, my parents didn't speak anything. Maybe right. a few words in English. My father was here a couple of years before my mother came, so he probably had some English. And at what point did you learn English? I learned English while I learned Hungarian because I was an infant right after they came here. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it meant that I had to learn two languages 
in order to communicate right. with everybody, with my parents for one thing. If I had just spoke Hungarian, I would have been fine with them, but then I had to get along with other people in the community too. Mm -hmm. So uh, I spoke two languages at once. And That's I, very and good, you know, for young, for young people to learn a language. Uh, as though it's, it's the most natural thing in the world. The same as they learn English, they're learning another language. I right. think that's excellent. They say, I read this somewhere recently, that the language you learn between the age of uh, one and six is the language you'd never forget. And it's true. Right, and you haven't forgotten your Hungarian. I never forgot it. That's wonderful, isn't and it? And then I did learn more. Because we had Hungarian refugees in Harrisburg where we lived at the time. They came here from uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, they got out of Hungary during the revolution. Okay. And they went to Germany. And from Germany they came here. And anyway, they lived in the same apartment building that we did. So we became friends. And what I didn't already know, I learned from them. And what they didn't know in English, which was just about everything, <laughs> I helped them learn. So and then it was you mutual. were born here, and then you had more siblings born in this country? Or were there only three of you? No, I had uh, a brother. I had two brothers and a sister born after me. Oh, so you were a family of six children. Right. What did your father do? My father was a coal miner. Okay. You know the story? I was a coal miner's daughter. <laughs> I really was. You could have sung that with Loretta Lynn, huh? <laughs> that's, that's why they came here. Okay. Because there was work here, and right. work happened to be in the coal mine. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people were, that you might speak to here, the older people will tell you that they lived in the coal region because that was where there was work. Right. Yeah. And while it was terrible work, it was work. Absolutely. And there was food on the table because they could go down and mine that coal. Right. Yeah. So at what point then did you become associated with Carroll County? Well, that's another long story, but uh, I'll try to make it as short as I can. The last place we lived before we came to Carroll County was Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. My husband had a job there. Oh, by this time you're married? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, right. But, by the time I, and my family had moved to Buffalo, New York, mm -hmm. and I stayed behind in Pennsylvania, and uh, my husband that I married right before they all left, and my husband got work in Harrisburg, and that's why we went to Harrisburg. How old and were you when you married him? How old were you when you married him? Eighteen. Oh, you were a child. I was a child <laughs> bride. I was a coal miner's child bride. <laughs> Anyway, uh, then we came from, uh, to Carroll County from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, because my husband changed jobs. And uh, he was given a choice of where he could live. It was, had, had to be in the, uh, the Baltimore, Washington uh, area, because he was a tire salesman. Okay. So that's how we ended up in Carroll County. We ended up in West Westminster just by chance. And we found a house to live in, which was another thing just by chance, because that, this was in the 60s that we came to Carroll County. And in the 60s, there weren't that many places to rent. Mm -hmm. And we weren't ready to buy. We didn't know how long we'd be here, and for one thing. So uh, we were looking for a place to rent, and by luck, we found one. And it happened to be on Ridge Road, which was a lovely section of town. Do you know Westminster well enough to know I that? I don't know where Ridge Road is. Hmm? I don't know where Ridge Road is. You don't. A lot of people don't know where Ridge Road is. I often see that address, but I have no idea where it is. You know where the college is. Yeah. Well, when you're going, up, you're going west on uh, Main Street, mm -hmm. when you get to the college, it's, it's on your right, and... Uh, to get to Ridge Road, you make a right, a left-hand turn onto New Windsor Road, and uh, from New Windsor Road, you uh, turn off to Ridge Road. Okay. Anyway, so that's where you found your first home here. Yes. Right. And did you have your, your children here then in Westminster? I had one child in Pennsylvania. My first daughter was born in the coal region, 
and my second daughter was born in Harrisburg, <laughs> 18 years apart. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Same husband? Mm. Because I know you've had two husbands. Yeah, but this was to the same husband. What happened with all the intervening years? <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I was working, and uh, I loved my job. I hated uh, leaving. Well, I had to leave the area because of my husband's job relocation. So, uh, uh, what were you doing? What was your job that you loved? I worked for a nationwide insurance company. Okay. In the accounting department, I was there for nine years. And could you not transfer to another nationwide office? I wasn't ready to go to work right away. Okay. I, I, I was new in the area and I didn't know there wasn't that much work in Westminster at the time. Okay. And I wasn't looking for a job, but I almost took a job at Dutter's Florist Shop. Oh yes, uh -huh. they're still there. Were they on um, whatever street they're on? Were they in that same place? Yeah, Pennsylvania. Avenue, That's right, isn't? yes, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, you just had the two girls then? That's all, two That's daughters. That's all, right. And tell me, when you were, when you were living in Pennsylvania, um, you obviously went, did all your schooling there? I beg your pardon? You did all your schooling there in Pennsylvania? Yes. Grade school? I had high school there. Okay, and primary school, yeah. elementary school. What age did you start elementary? Did you have a kindergarten? I, about six years, I guess. I went to a country school. I went to a, a one-room country school. We lived in the country at the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we used, I used to walk to school. Uh, I mean, we really lived in the boondocks when we lived in the country in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. We lived in Catawissa County, which is uh, pretty isolated, shall we say. Okay. So uh, the only thing that was anywhere near us was a poor farm. Do you know what a poor farm is? No. <laughs> is that like a poor well, house? The, the, the place that is now the farm museum right. at one time was what we called the poor farm. Okay, same as a poor house. Right. Where people go who right. don't where have people enough money. Who, homeless right. people went when they right. had no place else to go. Yeah. And there was one of those near us. But other than that... Well, where did the other coal miners live? Well, my father used to have to drive to the coal mine. Ah, he had a car. He had a car, <laughs> which was very unreliable. <laughs> I don't know how he ever got to and from. What kind of car was it? Do you remember? No. It was a, a small thing. All I remember about that car is when we moved from the country into the city, and we had a cat we wanted to take along, and my father said, well, the only way we can take this cat where it will stay put, is to put it in a bag and so it can't see where we're going. Right. <laughs> and did it work? It did. It did. <laughs> <laughs> At least as far as I know it did. Because so I was not that, I was what, how old then? Maybe six, maybe even seven. But anyway, I had a very uh, spectacular life, shall we say. <laughs> We moved a good bit when I was young. And when you went to this one-room schoolhouse, how many years did you go to that school? Maybe two. Okay, and what was your teacher's name? Do you remember? No, that I don't remember. You don't remember. And when you moved from there, then were you in a school with more classes? Well, when I moved from the farm to the city, it was uh, in a little town called Atlas. And uh, we had a school there that I think, I can't remember how many grades were in that school. It was an elementary school. And that's where I really learned to read, in that school. I found learning to read very easy because I loved words and I loved stories. Mm -hmm. So that part of learning was very easy for me. When it comes to math. I was going to say, how was the number work? <laughs> that was not too good, <laughs> but I was good with language. But I had a good start in language. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you spoke two languages quite fluently, I assume. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what, did you ever learn to read and write Hungarian? No, I never did learn to read and write. They did have a, 
my parents belonged to a, a club that was a Hungarian club. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did have a teacher come from somewhere, I don't even know where, and taught uh, some Hungarian history and, and reading and writing and some stories. But I never went because I already knew what I needed to know. Right. Except for the history and stuff like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. which they didn't get that much of. And my brother didn't want to go, so he would sneak out and get out the side window of the school. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't have to stay for lessons. <laughs> no, he never did. My sister did. My one sister did. She stayed. And she still has a reader that they gave her mm -hmm. to learn from. But now when you look at the words, can you recognize the words or not? I can because it's all Arabic characters. It's the same uh, same as English. Right. When we're done here, I'll show you a calendar I have and it'll give you an idea. Okay, okay. So anyway, you married this man. What was his name? The man I married? Mm -hmm. My first husband was John Marquette. Okay, and you married him when you were 18 and you moved to Harrisville? Harris? Harrisburg. No, we were living in the coal region at the time I married him. Right, but then you said he got a job. He was a tire salesman. Right, and that's when we moved to Harrisburg. Right, and from Harrisburg you moved here to Carroll County. Right. Right, and when you moved to Carroll County, um, how long did you live here? Well, I lived here until I got married the second time. So how many years? Uh, let me see, from 19... 60 to 1979. So 19 years, a long time. Yeah. And then I lived in Indiana for 10 years until my... That's your clock. Me, that's my clock. <laughs> until my uh, husband died and I came back to Carroll County. So your first husband, he passed away? Yes. Yeah, what did he die of? He died of uh, lung disease. Had he ever been a minor? Your first husband, had he ever been a minor? I didn't hear that last word. Had he ever worked in the mines? No, he worked outside. Oh, I wonder why he got lung disease. Was he a smoker? Did he smoke? Yes. Oh. He smoked cigarettes and cigars. Oh, okay. And he, he was an outdoors kid. He, he was a Boy Scout. Mm -hmm. And he spent a lot of time out in the open. Mm -hmm. So that should have made him healthier. Well, you'd think so, yes. How old was he when he died? He was 65. Okay, so he was quite six. young yet. Yeah. Well, it depends on By what today's he, standards, he that's was That's right, young. yes. Yeah. So so then, were your, were your girls grown by then or not? Well, my one daughter was still in college. The other one was married and had children of her own. But the, uh, the second daughter was still in college. She went to Frostburg and graduated from Frostburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, so how long were you widowed before you remarried? About five years. Okay. And when did, did you go to Indiana with your second husband then? Yes. Ah, okay. So I you... met him on a trip to Florida. My sister was staying in Florida, and she invited me to come down and stay with them for a while. And I did, and that's when I met my second husband in decided then, well, we talked about getting married, and I said, well, why not? I was then, what, 72, something like 72 years older, and he was five years older. Oh, okay. And I said, well, you know, if we have 10 years, that's good. Absolutely. <laughs> and did you and have that's about years? exactly what we did have. <laughs> <laughs> and what did he pass on from? What did he die from? Yeah. I was going to say old age, but it wasn't really old age. It was, uh, he had heart disease. Okay. And that's what he died from, heart right. disease. Right, okay. I don't think they can put old age on a death certificate. Yeah. I think they have to be more specific. <laughs> so then you came back to Carroll County when you were widowed the second time, is that that's right? right? That's right. Okay. I came back to Carroll well, my husband died right before the, the start of this century. Mm -hmm. He died uh, between Christmas and New Year's of uh, 99. Okay, right. So uh, I stayed there until 
after the funeral and everything was over. I stayed there till March. In March, my brother and sister and I came, drove down to Florida. We had a place down there. We went down there and stayed there for a couple of weeks, and I sold that place, and I knew I wouldn't go back again because it was my sister was gone then, mm -hmm. and there weren't too many people left that I knew, so. Right. And so it you was decided on Carroll County. And why? Why did you come back here? Because my daughter lived here. Okay. And uh, I liked Carroll County. I had a lot of friends here, mm -hmm. and I wanted to come back. As it was home. Right, right. You've County lived here was home. almost 20 years. And it still is. <laughs> when, you, when you moved back, where did you live initially? When you first moved back here, where did you live? When I first moved back here, I stayed with my daughter. While I looked for a place, I was looking for a place to buy, and then I thought, well, maybe I don't have to buy a place. Maybe it's going to be more trouble getting rid of it than I want to get into. Right. So. By luck, I found a place to live on the, at Pars Ridge. I say by luck because I was looking at a place to buy, and the realtor had a, this other place that she was handling, and it had an empty apartment, so I looked at it, and I liked it, and I took it. Ah, so you went into an apartment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a condominium. Right, uh-huh. But then you didn't have to worry about lawn care and if the roof leaked and that sort of thing. Is that right? Right. Right, because if you have a house, then you've got all the worries of home maintenance. Yes. And for a woman alone, that's a big responsibility. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I love the condo. I'd still be living there if I hadn't gotten a very serious illness. I had a uh, colonoscopy. Okay. And I couldn't stay there because I lived on the second floor. And which, no elevator. No elevator. Okay, right. Yeah. It was a very inconvenient thing to be on the second floor, even when I was well. But there was no way they would allow me to go back there. Right. Um, so I stayed with my daughter, who lives on Turkey Foot Road. Mm -hmm. I love that name, Turkey Foot Road. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely road. It's an old country road. At one time, it was part of the main route from, uh, from Westminster to... Um, Gettysburg. Okay. That's all been changed since then, but at one time that was part of the road to Gettysburg. Right. That's a country road and it's, it's um, dirt. Even, and each even side still? of the road has trees growing up on it. It's a beautiful road. And it's still not paved? No. <laughs> <laughs> They've been talking about it for 35 or 40 years, but <laughs> it hasn't so happened far, yet, huh? <laughs> nothing has happened. <laughs> But it so is you a have, charming you road. have two daughters, then how many grandchildren? I have, uh, I have to stop and think. My, my great-grandchildren are the most numerous I had. I have two grandchildren by the younger daughter, mm -hmm. and I had three by the older daughter, so I had five grandchildren all together. Right. And we lost one grandson in a, in a terrible tractor accident oh. when he was only 15 and a half years old. It took us a long time to get over that, but we did. As much as you can ever get over exactly, something like yeah, that. Exactly, yeah, yeah. He would now be 30 years old. Mm -hmm. That was a grandson. That was a grandson, a lovely boy. And so now how many great-grandchildren are there? Well, the great grand one of my granddaughters has eight Ooh. children, all of whom she homeschooled. The oldest one now is uh, in his third year in college in West Virginia. Oh, my goodness. No, not in West Virginia, in Virginia. Okay. And the others are all, one girl is married. The oldest daughter is married, and she's expecting a baby in maybe June. So I'll have a great-grandchild in June. <laughs> A great great grandchild. Great great a great great grandchild. Yeah, a great, oh my great goodness. One. Oh my goodness. Tell me now. I'm sure your gra your great grandchildren. I'm sure um, probably spent a lot of time with computer games and uh, these little things they do with their fingers. You know. And when you were a child, how did you spend your time? When you weren't in school. When I went to school. When you weren't in school. 
When I wasn't in school, mm -hmm. we used to play outdoors a lot. Mm -hmm. What did you play? We played tag, we played hide and seek. What else did we play? I can't really remember. We're going back 89 years now. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, well, you had two older sisters, but they were a lot older. Well, and the old, the next oldest was eight years older. I exactly, yeah. So and you really the, the didn't have anybody to play dollies with. What? You didn't play dolls. No. I had one doll. And remember, these were Depression days. Absolutely. And uh, I had one doll and one doll carriage, and the boys ruined the doll carriage. <laughs> And I wasn't that nuts about it. I was not the motherly type. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you become the motherly type when you had your own? I had to. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I think some women are more maternal than others, don't you? Yeah. 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 I was very close to my first daughter. It was the two of us, and there was nobody else in the family. My my. My extended family was gone, and so uh, it was just the two of us until we made new friends. She made friends and I made friends, but she was young when we moved to Harrisburg. She was only about two, mm -hmm. two or three years old. So uh, we, we were closer together. The second daughter was close too because I stayed home with her. I didn't have a job anymore didn't have to get up and go to work, and I was able to be a mother. And that was a wonderful time. I really enjoyed that time, because we did a lot of things together. Mm -hmm. And when she was in school, I used to help the teacher, her teachers, a lot. And we went on trips together to Washington and wherever they went on a, a day trip. School trips? School trips? Yeah. Oh, okay. You'd go yeah. along as a chaperone, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll never forget going to the top of the uh, Washington Monument one time with the, I think my daughter was in first grade that year, and there was one little boy who would not ride the elevator up. Absolutely, he would not go up. So I volunteered to walk up with him. <laughs> that was brave of you. <laughs> it was. It was very brave of me. But then coming down, he decided he'd use the elevator. I thought, well, why don't you do that <laughs> way up? <laughs> Because he'd figured out how many steps it was. <laughs> no, maybe that was it. I don't know. But anyway, when we walked up, but we rode down. <laughs> and you should have done it in reverse. <laughs> it should. <laughs> oh, well, I made it. <laughs> and so did he. I don't know what happened to him. I lost track of him because the school that my daughter went to at that time, she was in first, first grade. It was at the West End School, which became, uh, what's it now, that's a, uh, a senior something, a senior center of some kind. Okay. So her school now is gone. And they really, uh, they landscaped it and did a lot to it. It's beautiful. We went there on a, on a day trip from here, from the village one year, a couple of years ago, and it was really good to see that what they had done with that old school. wonder where it is. It's on... Um, it's here in Westminster. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's... I'm trying to think of what street it's... I don't know what street it's on anymore. It's not too far from where we lived on Ridge Road. Okay. Because my daughter there. used to mm -hmm. walk to school from there. Mm-hmm. And you walked to school when you were little? Oh, yes, but it wasn't a couple blocks, it was a couple miles. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two miles. What did you do in the winter? We walked to school. <laughs> you did? A lot of snow? I can't remember that. Oh, okay. Because that's cold. I don't remember that either, and you think I would remember how cold it was. Absolutely, you'd think so. <laughs> but I don't remember that. Hmm. As I said, it's been a number of years ago. <laughs> so, what year were you born again? 22. 22. And the Depression started in 29, right? Yeah. And you were seven. 
Yeah. So those first years of the Depression, you were walking back and forth to school. Mm -hmm. how Everybody did, did. How did the Depression affect your family? We did without a lot. Yeah, I can imagine. Did your father stay in work? Oh, he worked, yes. But a coal miner did not make much money. No, but... And with the farm and everything, he he was trying to make a go of the farm so he could live on that. Oh, he was farming as well? Yeah. Oh, okay. But it didn't work out because uh, the farm wasn't big enough to be, uh, to be a lucrative thing. No, but it would help with the groceries for the family. We did. We did. We raised a lot. We had fruit and all kinds of fresh vegetables. My mother had a cow. Mm -hmm. We had plenty of milk and she made cheese and things. And... We lived well. We had plenty to eat. Did you get? Did you have chickens? Yes, yeah, she had chickens. So you could eat chickens and you could have eggs. Right. Right. But we, she had a mean rooster. <laughs> that rooster wouldn't let my brother and I pass his place. He had a certain area where he and the hens stayed. Uh huh. And we couldn't walk past there without him getting after us. <laughs> I know he pecked me a lot of times. <laughs> And I wasn't about to let him rule my life, but he did. <laughs> but you didn't keep, uh, you know, a, a, a pig, for instance, for slaughtering, to have bacon and so forth? Did you keep any other animals to eat? We had a pig. Okay. And I guess they butchered the pig, but I can't remember that happening. Okay. I remember the pig, uh, oh gosh. I'd forgotten about this for a long time, but the pig got hung up on them. They had a little outbuilding where they kept the pig, and uh, there was a nail stuck out of some part of the building, and the, and the, the pig got hung up on this nail. Ouch. And my mother couldn't lift him off, so he had to hang there and squeal and squeal until he got tired of squealing. <laughs> and then he shut up, and then the, he was saved. He did get saved. My father uh -huh. came home and took him off. Oh, for goodness sakes. But I, I almost forgot that story. That was a really bad one. <laughs> Did you have pets? We had one cat. Maybe we had two. We went back to the city with one cat, but we may have had two at one time. No dogs. No dogs, huh? No. No fishes, no birds, no... Lizards. <laughs> what? I said no fishes, no birds, no lizards, no, no rabbits, no, 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 just cats. No pets. We had the cow. Her name was Bossy. Who and I remember her? my mother saying we had a little cornfield behind the house, and uh, we had a, a neighbor that lived right across the, the way from us. You could see their house from our house, and they got all excited one time and told my mother, "Your cows in the corn." And, and my mother said, I know the cow's in the corn. She's eating the weeds on the, between the rows. <laughs> and the cow never touched the corn. Really? <laughs> mm, she just ate the, the weeds between the rows. Well, I guess that's easier than hoeing it, isn't it? it just sure turn the was. cow out. <laughs> <laughs> so those neighbors were nice. They were Pennsylvania Dutch people. And they had sons but no daughters. And... Uh, I'll never forget the day my sister was born, my next youngest sister, the only sister I had after that. And uh, it was potato picking time. Mm -hmm. And my sisters were home from New York at the time and they were helping pick the potatoes. And my younger sister, my next sister to me in age, was all upset. She said to my mother, can't you wait until tomorrow <laughs> when my daughter was, or my sister was being born? Can't you wait until tomorrow? <laughs> to have the baby. <laughs> yeah. Because she wanted to be in on the potato picking. Oh, well, anyway, that was... And are all your siblings gone now? Are all your siblings gone now? Have they all passed on? No, except the one. My younger sister still living. And where does she live? She lives in uh, Hamburg, New York. Oh, okay. Near Buffalo. Right. So you don't get to see her. No, I don't see her much anymore. Right. We used to go back to Florida. She and my brother and I used to drive to Florida. Well, my brother did the driving. 
and we would run a place for a month, the month of February. We stayed there the whole month. Uh huh. And that was really fun. It was nice to be together. You were early snowbirds, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe they didn't call them snowbirds then, but now. Yes, they did. Oh, they did. Yes, they, I think they always did. Oh, that term goes back a long ways then. Oh, it does. <laughs> But anyway, we did go back and spend the whole month in Florida. But we went to a place different. We were right on a, a place to live. We used to go to Tarpon Springs, to the Tarpon Springs area, which is a mostly Greek settlers, settlers there. Mm -hmm. And uh, sponge fishing is a big industry there. Oh, I didn't know they did sponge fishing in Florida. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. This is on the Gulf. It's in the, right, on the uh -huh. northern part of the Gulf. Up on the panhandle? Not that far up. Okay. But anyway, that's where we chose to stay, and we loved it. Mm hmm And there was a park there that we used to love to go to, where we went to go swimming and just hang around around the water. Mm-hmm. Were it you a was, good swimmer? Oh, yes. You were? Enjoyed swimming? I loved swimming. How old were you when you learned to swim? Oh... I don't know. Maybe I was, I know I was in elementary school. That's another story that's got a, <laughs> a twist to it. We used to live in this little town in Pennsylvania, this whole region town. And there was a old, um, I guess it was a reservoir outside the town. And uh, the kids used to go there to swim and they shouldn't have been doing it because the water was way over our heads for mm -hmm. one thing. And on the floor of that reservoir were all these broken glass things. Oh. And uh, I went up there one day with my brother and some of his friends, and they pushed me in the water. And you know what that meant? It meant either sink or swim, and right. I didn't sink. <laughs> you swam. <laughs> I doggy paddled and got back. But I never forgave him for that. <laughs> Because I didn't dare land my feet on the floor of the no. place. No, well, it was too deep anyway, wasn't it? It was too deep anyway, yeah. and even if it wouldn't have been, I w would have cut myself all up. Right. I wonder why there's all that glass down there. Who knows? Maybe something they did there before they flooded it. I have no idea. It was just there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you ever ice skate up there? No. Never ice skating? We didn't do any ice skating there. We did in the, in the next town. When I lived there, uh, the next town was, oh, maybe five miles away, maybe not quite that far away. And when we left this town, we went to, after we came back from the farm, we went to this town, next town about five miles away. And uh, that, I lost my train of thought on what I was going to say. I'd ask you about ice skating. That's where we went ice skating. Okay. There was a place there that was flooded. Uh, it wasn't a lake or anything. It was just a flooded place that we used to go in the wintertime to ice skate. In mm -hmm. the summer, we used to go there and pick berries. Okay. <laughs> so the, the flooding, it didn't drown the berries out. Right. <laughs> and do you remember the ice skates you had? Do you remember the ice skates you had? When I was a little girl, yes, had they were they were they were uh, they were figure skates, and I think they were given to me by my girlfriend, who outgrew them. They were figure skates, and they were white, uh -huh. and they laced up. They were beautiful skates, and they were good. Oh, okay. How about roller skating? Did you ever go roller skating? Roller skating was my thing. I loved roller skating. Ice skating, my ankles were not very good for that. Okay. But I could ice skate, I roller skate with no trouble. I was a good roller skater. Anything that had to do with dancing or moving like that, I was good at. Mm -hmm. Did you? When I was a little girl, we had clamp-on roller skates. Did you have those? Oh, yeah, we had those. Yeah, the ones that clamped onto your shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. But the ice skates were the real figure skates, and uh, we used to roller skate on the streets with the clamp on mm -hmm. roller skates. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, we had those. We all had those. There wasn't much to do in a small town in Pennsylvania or anywhere at that time. 
you had to use your imagination for a lot of things that you did. I remember uh, in the summertime when we'd have a rainstorm, and it didn't even matter if it was a thunderstorm, we'd be out in the rain in our bathing suits getting all wet and slopping around in the gutters. And that yeah, was <laughs> I remember the same thing. You yeah, do? Yeah, yeah, going out and playing in the rain. I did that with my grandson once when he was, oh, maybe three. My sister, my daughter thought that was really a bizarre thing to do, but I thought it was fun. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> oh, he loved it, going I'm out playing sure. in the rain. <laughs> Is he the only grandson you have? No, I have um, three, three grandsons, and I'm trying to count up here, because I got a new granddaughter this week. I mean, I didn't get a new one, but she resurfaced. She's, she was lost to our family for 20-some years. Oh, my. And we just found her this week. Um, so there are three grand, yeah, three granddaughters and three grandsons. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. So. That keeps you busy. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. Except there are only, only, th only three, of, three of them live here. Oh. So one lives in Germany and two of them live down in Georgia. That's pretty far away. Yeah, it is. <laughs> So do you get to see your grandkids? Not very much. My one grandson, or well, the only grandson I have, lives um, in Pennsylvania in Hanover. And uh, I don't see him very much. He's married and he has a child of his own. Did you ever play an instrument yourself? No, I started piano, but I didn't stick with it because it required more discipline than I could give it. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you like to dance. I would now. Now I'm sorry I didn't stick with it. I had a nun that was teaching me. I was going to a parochial school at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a nun for a teacher, but we didn't have a piano, but my, our neighbors did, and they let me use the piano to practice on. But uh, like I said, it was too much discipline, and I would rather be out doing something else. Right. <laughs> but you liked to dance? That I like to do. You like dancing? I love dancing. Dancing was part of my life always. I couldn't decide whether I would rather be out dancing or riding horseback. When I got older, of course, when I was <laughs> married and had choices that I right. could make. But um, What kind of dancing did you do? Ballroom type dancing. Okay. Did you ever Waltzing. do the Charleston? What? Did you ever do the Charleston? No, that was before my time. I we know did that. do it in high school. Okay. We learned how to do a lot of those old dances in high school. Mm -hmm. We learned the, the Charleston and the um, Big Apple and all the, the Lindy Hop, all those uh, old time mm -hmm. dances. I remember when I was in school, we learned to do the Shottish. Did you ever learn to do the Shottish? No. Oh, gosh, I love dancing the shottish. I didn't like to dance, but I like to do the shottish. <laughs> How do you do that? It's, it's three people, and uh, I don't know. It's a country dance. And you swing your legs this way, you swing your legs that way, you hop this way, you hop that way. It's, it's really it's quite fun. <laughs> oh. I always wanted to dance, and I never, never did. I was too shy. I was very shy as a you girl. You were? Oh, my goodness, yes. You couldn't it's say hard to believe it. now. I know. I know. <laughs> You're far from shy now. I know that. <laughs> You've come a long way. Indeed I have. <laughs> yes, dancing was always one of my great things. I loved roller skating. Uh, anything to music was just great with me. Mm -hmm. I love classical music best of all. But I liked country music too. And uh, I grew up on some country, Hungarian country music, mm -hmm. which is, we call them tearjerkers. Okay. They're a lot like American tearjerkers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they're like. But they aren't like German umpapa music. What is it? I said it's not like German umpapa music. No, not like that. Okay. A lot of the classical music, like uh, Brahms and Liszt, Liszt uh, yeah. based their... Uh, they're classical pieces on Hungarian folk songs. Oh, okay. Hmm. So my mother used to say they're not playing it right. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was different than she knew it. Right. <laughs> when did your parents pass away? When did your parents, parents pass away? My mother died in 84. 
My father died in uh, 50, 57 or 58. Oh, he was quite young when he died then. Yes. He died of congestive heart failure, but that's what my mother died of too. Both of them, huh? So many people die of congestive heart failure that I wonder, just what is this uh, congestive heart failure? <laughs> I think that the area around your heart fills up with liquid. I well, think my husband died of the same thing. Right, yeah. So. But your heart's all right? So far. Knock on wood. <laughs> <clears throat> I go see Dr. Selsky here. He comes here. Uh, I don't know how often he comes here to the village. Uh, and uh, his patients can see him here instead of going to his office mm -hmm. in town. So I keep, uh, they keep doing track of my heart. Right. So when did you start to lose your sight? About 95. I was in Indiana at the time. I have to make some inquiries about that. I saw an ad on television here the other night about uh, macular degeneration, that there is treatment for it. And I heard somebody tell me, it was an old friend of mine and had uh, something done to her eyes. Uh, it sounds horrible. I have to really think about this. They put a, uh, a shot of some kind in your eyeball. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it does. I have to find out more about it because I'm very interested in getting improvement on my vision. But I wonder if it actually improves it or if it simply stops it getting worse. Well, either way is okay. Right. Because uh, I've noticed mine getting worse. How much vision do you have right now? Can I don't you see really me? know. Can you see me? I can see you, but not plainly. Right. You can see a shape of me. I can see your shape, your face and your, your head and your hair and, right. and your body. Mm-hmm. But uh, in detail, I don't see much. Oh, okay, right. And so you can't read now, is that right? Oh, well, I can't. I haven't been able to read for a long time. There's my reading machine. I know you have a reading machine, and how mm -hmm. is it working with that? It's not as useful as it used to be. Oh, is it? Because, because my condition has worsened. Right, okay. It's okay. It's the same as it's always been, but my eyes are not. Yeah, yeah it's not the machine, it's you. Mm. Yeah. So, and does the, does the doctor say that eventually you'll be totally blind? No, they told me the opposite. They said I would never be totally blind. Okay. But I think they told a falsehood. <laughs> Trying to make you feel better, huh? Maybe. <laughs> but maybe they weren't considering how much longer I'd live. I was going to say, it could be too that it's slow <laughs> enough that, you know, you'll die of something else before your sight goes completely. Really? Yeah. I know my dad had prostate cancer. And the doctor said, you know, he said, at your age, he said, you're going to die of something else before you die of prostate cancer. And he did. Well. You know, because it was so slow growing. Oh. So. Well, that's it. We're living a lot longer. Yeah. Than we ever did. And we're getting more things. The things we already have wrong with us are getting worse. Right. And we're wide open to new things, too. Mm -hmm. So getting old isn't all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard it been cracked up to be anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. They used to say, you know, uh, age is a matter of, of your, how you look, look at it and thinking. But there's a lot more to age than that. Yes. But some people, don't you think some people are old at 55? And other people at 85 are still young. That's true. So it's a, it's a lot about yeah. how you think about it, I think. And as long as you have your health. As long as you have your health, you have everything. Yeah. And that's it. When that starts to go, you're going to. Absolutely. Because, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you can't buy your health back. No, nope. You can spend a lot of money on it, but you can't buy Absolutely. it back. Absolutely, yeah. I read someplace that Americans spend more money on their health in the last six months of their life than they did in all the rest of their life. Well, I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm because at the age where it's not hard for me to believe. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you keep, I keep thinking, well, if nothing else goes wrong, I can stand this. Mm -hmm. But about the time I, then I had that fall, and I thought, no, this is it. Right. This is really it. Yeah. But I'm getting over it. Well, good. 
good. Slowly, very slowly. Well, next time you get up to go to the bathroom, get up and go to the bathroom. Don't fall asleep on the edge of don't the bed. Don't think about it. <laughs> That's right. Don't think about it. I was it. thinking about it. That's when I made my big mistake. <laughs> but I didn't want to get up in the first place. Anyway, that's past now. That's. But you know, if you don't get up, you can't go back to sleep because you have to go to the bathroom. So you might just as well get up and go. You might as well get it over with. Absolutely, yeah. Well. Because I have to get up usually once every night, and I'll lie there and think, no, I don't. I don't have to. I don't <laughs> have to, and I can't go back to sleep. So I finally get up and go. <laughs> you might as well get it over Absolutely. with. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what I figure, get it over with. But this day, I was so tired. I didn't want to get up, and I did. I should have just not gotten up when I did. I should have just waited there until it got un absolutely un unbearable. <laughs> but anyway, I'll never do that again. I hope not. <laughs> and then somebody made a suggestion, well, maybe you passed out. I don't think I passed out. I, I would have known. I think I would have known what the difference was between passing out and falling asleep. I have no idea. Certainly when I go to bed at night, I pass out, but I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well. Are you happy living here at the village? Yes, I like it here. That's good. They're very good to me, and I'm as happy here as I would be anywhere. Mm -hmm. They take good care of me, and they feed me, and... Now, come now, Rose, me. I'm sure you feed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> they entertain me, and, and they're good to me. I like it here. I said, I don't know where I'd rather be. Right. I wouldn't even want to be with my daughter as good as she was to me, because uh, that's a different, uh, it's a different time of your life. Your, your needs are different than they were when you were younger, when mm -hmm. you were self-sufficient. Your needs change a lot. Is this your younger daughter or older daughter that's here? My older daughter. Older my daughter. younger daughter lives in Hagerstown. Okay, right. And she has a full-time job, a responsible job with the government, mm -hmm. and two children who are teenagers, mm -hmm. and she keeps her own house, so she's got her hands full. Right, exactly, yeah. So. No, my friends are all here, and I have good friends that come to visit me, and call me on the phone and, mm -hmm. and are good to me, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to leave here. How long did you go to, to First Presbyterian? Where? How long have you been a member at First Presbyterian? How long? Uh-huh. Since we came to Westminster in 19, maybe it was 61, we didn't join right away. The, the church was just being formed then, and we just missed being charter members by a little bit. So that was in about 61. Okay, right. And do you know, like, Diane Dickey and Don Bitzel, do you know them through church? Oh, yeah, they're friends of mine. Right, but you know them through church? Yes. Yes, okay, yes. yeah. Now, Don was a neighbor on Ridge Road. She's still on Ridge Road. Oh, okay. Well, that's where she lives, is it? And, and Diane and I, Diane Dickey and I, got to know each other better when we served on the pastor nominating committee the year that we called... Um, Stephen Steve, Fleming. Steve, yeah. Okay. So I've known, I've been a friend of hers since then. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know her too much before that in the church because uh, everybody has a different activity in the church. They do a different kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. And some people don't do anything. But yeah. that's another story. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. <laughs> but most of the people I did, I did know were doers. Right, uh-huh. Well, you must have known Emily well then. Yes, I did know Emily quite mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Yeah, she's sorely missed at church. I'm sure. Yeah. And I was just thinking about her either today or yesterday, I forget when. For some reason I thought about her and I said it didn't seem like she was dead. It seemed like she was still living. wonder, when did she die? Do you remember? About a year ago. Is it that long? About a year ago, yeah. Well, I can't remember. I know I wasn't at her funeral. I don't remember what time of year it was. Well, I was in Europe about this time last year. Maybe, maybe it was while I was away that she died and the funeral was. Because I know I did not go to her funeral. 
I was I saw her at hospice once and then I knew she died but I think it must have happened when I was away it might have but I can't remember exactly yeah, what I don't it happened. remember either hmm. I can rack my brain, but I still won't remember. Uh, that's, that's what I'm doing, too, and I, I just can't get a handle on it. So, We had um, a few of our church members died. Uh, Virginia Rosen, did you know Virginia? Mm -hmm. No. And her husband, Carl, had died not too long before she did. Virginia died while she was here at the village. She had some kind of an infection. Um, Bursa? Could be, yeah. I think it was Bursa. She yeah. had that and they couldn't cure it. They gave her all kinds of treatments for it and it mm -hmm. didn't work. She died of it. And uh, and Bob uh, Baker. Yeah, Bob. I, I knew Bob and Gertrude, of course. And, his, and Gertrude is living right up the street here, yeah. right up the right hall. Right up the hall, <laughs> right up the yeah. street. <laughs> <laughs> she sits at one of the tables next to me in the dining room. She's lovely. She is. She's, she's, she's wonderful. She's a lovely lady. And her daughter comes off and... Yeah, with the dog. Marilyn with the dog. With the dog. Florence. She Not has Florence. that dog trained so well. <laughs> she does. I was watching a show about pets and how they're trained. And this little dog, this Edith... Edith, Edith Cavell. Cavell. Edith Cavell. Is so well trained that you'd think she was... Uh, a lot uh, under training a lot longer than right, she has she's, been. she's not very old, is she? No. No, I know that. She's a puppy, really. She is. Yeah. Adorable. She was here with her the other day. And yeah. She comes every Wednesday, doesn't she? I don't know if she has a certain day to come. Uh, well, when I was visiting Charlotte, she used to come on a Wednesday. So. She's a nice person. Oh, she's wonderful. Yeah, she is. Yeah, Marilyn. And I can see her mother and her are a lot alike mm -hmm. in many ways. Mm -hmm. We used to sit with Gertrude and Bob a lot. Don Bitzel and I used to sit with them at, uh, fam at uh, church dinners and things. Right. We got to be in the habit of doing them. We'd see each other. Oh, yeah, we're going to sit together. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's, that's not like home used to be. Uh, the church isn't like as home like to me as it used to be right. because a lot of the people that are there now are newer members that I don't even know. Right, things change. You know, that's that's the way the world is. Yeah. So. But I still feel much a part of it, even though I don't get to church at all. Mm -hmm. I you feel go to very church here. Hmm? Do you go to services here? Oh on yes. Sundays. I go every Sunday I can. Yeah. I haven't been going lately because of my <laughs> injury. <laughs> right. <laughs> my injury. <laughs> <laughs> but I do go every Sunday. And I don't go to church, but I listen to them and watch it on television. Mm -hmm. Can you so, see television? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can. Oh, that's Not good. real good, but I can see it well enough. Right. And, and I can hear it. Yeah. I'm, I really love Ch Chaplain Jimmy. He's a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a very nice man. And so is the other chaplain now, the new man that took part of Charlotte's service. I can't think what his name yeah, is. Yeah, um, Doll Drumming. Doll Drumming. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they both seem very nice men. So. I hear he's going to be leaving the, the state. Somebody told me he was going to move to Arizona. He has a daughter who lives there. Oh, okay. And uh, what... I said, that's what we all do, isn't it, as we get older? We move nearer our kids. <laughs> but he's lived here in Carroll County all his life. Uh-huh. And he's been active in, in the community and around, and he's now an ordained minister. Mm hmm So, uh, and he's a nice guy, too. Yeah. yeah. We'll miss him. Yeah. So. Arizona will benefit while we lose him. That's right. <laughs> Well, this has been interesting. I hope it worked <laughs> on the camera. <laughs> well, if it didn't, it didn't. We had fun anyway. And if it didn't, we'll just do it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>